Hi everybody, welcome back to Savage by Sammy. I'm Samantha Stoddard, and today I am gonna be doing a full flip on an Ikea dresser. I cannot believe that I actually have never done an Ikea flip. I take that back. My first piece that I ever painted was my husband's old um, nightstands and bedroom set. So I painted those, I didn't prime, I didn't sand, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but this piece is really fun. It's going in my best friend's nursery and we're gonna do a full 180 on it We're gonna add skewers. We're gonna add stain. It's gonna be awesome However, stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna share all my tips and tricks that I found To make this project easier for when you do it and for when I do it again Before we get started if you could hit the subscribe button and the notification bell I would be so appreciative this helps me continue to create free content for you. So let's get started. As you can see, this piece wasn't in bad shape. It really just needed an upgrade. I started by removing all of the hardware. That way when I cleaned it, there was no gunk or junk left behind under them. When redoing a piece, you can always reuse the hardware and just clean it up by using spray paint or Barkeeper's Friend to make them look new. However, these are concrete I think um, they were very hard they were old so I'm actually just gonna put all new knobs on once all the hardware is removed we're gonna use crud cutter to wipe down the entire piece now crud cutter is a degreaser so it's great to use on all furniture and I also use it in my kitchen as well this piece wasn't that dirty, but if you do have a piece that's horribly dirty, you can dump some of the concentrated crud cutter in with water and use a scrub brush to scrub down your entire piece. Next, we're going to use 80 grit sandpaper to remove all of the old varnish and stain off of this piece. Everything but the drawers on this piece is actually solid wood, so I wasn't too worried about going with such a low grit. If this piece were to have veneer on it, I definitely would have stripped it first or only started with about 150 grit. Because the drawers were laminate, the top on them was pretty slick, so I'm gonna be gluing skewers to them. So I took 80 grit sandpaper to it just to rough it up so that the glue had something to stick to. After that, I went over the entire piece with 100 grit sandpaper. I then went over it again with 150 grit. Whenever you're sanding, you wanna start with a lower grit and then work your way up. The lower the number of grit that you're using, the rougher the sandpaper is, and vice versa. The higher the grit, the smoother it is. So as you work your way up from a lower grit up to a higher grit, this actually closes up the grain and makes your piece super smooth. Again, for this piece, I started by using an 80 to get rid of all of the stain in the top coat, and then I'm moving on to a 100. I will then do 150 grit before the stain, and then after stain prior to top coat, I will do a 220 grit. All right, so after I was done sanding, I ran to Walmart and grabbed 22 packs of skewers. I cleaned out the entire row. Then I wiped the drawers down with a tack cloth to remove any dust residue so that the glue and skewers would attach well. Because this was my first time doing fluted drawers, I really had no idea what I was doing. I was kind of just winging it. Um, I am using some wood glue here and then using a chip brush to just spread it all over the piece. It definitely worked better to work in small sections of 
putting down the glue and then laying down the skewers. That way the glue didn't dry out too quickly. For the first couple rows, I tried to line up the flat edge of the skewers along the edge of the drawer, but that just was not working. It was taking too long and I was going to have to clean up the edges anyways. So I just went ahead and started laying them flat and then I will cut off the edges once they're all good and dry. As you can see, I am periodically picking up one or two pieces and replacing them up in the right corner is kind of my trash pile. Skewers are not going to be straight. And so every time there was one that was a little crooked or wasn't laying flat, I would just pick it up and swap it out with a straight one. All right, so it is the next morning. Um, I let the skewers dry overnight. It is super, super humid out today and yesterday. So the glue is actually taking a lot longer to dry. So I put some um, paint containers on it so that they would dry it overnight. And I'm gonna flip you around and show you. And then today we are going to sand it down, get some stain on it and top coat. Once all of the skewers were dry, I grabbed my Ryobi multi-tool. This tool is an essential in my workshop because I can use it for so many different projects. I tried a few different methods when it was time to cut off the excess, but this definitely worked the best. I used a box of knobs to place on the drawer to kind of give me a guide to follow, but it also held down the skewers to make sure that the multi-tool didn't nick any of them and make them pop off. After doing a quick cleanup on the garage, I took 150 grit sandpaper and then used that box again to kind of give me another guide. Um, and then I sanded down all of the edges to make them super smooth. All right, now you guys may think I'm crazy for what I'm about to show you, but this is easily my favorite wood glue hack. Grab a needle and fill it with wood glue. You can get these needles just on Amazon and fill it up with wood glue, and this will allow you to get under any veneer, any tiny little spots that you need to add wood glue to. Please make sure that if you have young kids or animals at home that you don't leave these sitting out anywhere, that somebody that doesn't need to be touching it, touches it. Next, I'm just gonna go along the drawer and try to find any spots that the skewers need a little bit more wood glue. So as you can see, here's a spot. So I'm just lifting up that skewer a little bit and then using the needle to put some more wood glue underneath it. My next biggest challenge was trying to figure out how I was going to drill holes for the hardware into these skewers. The drawers already had holes, so I decided to flip them on the face of the drawer to hold the skewers in place and then very, very slowly take a drill bit and drill through them. I was not sure if this was actually going to work, but as you can see, it worked perfectly and going slow was definitely the key. All right, Charlie girl just got home from daycare. So I will put a pause on this and we will finish up after bedtime. Let me say hi. Everything is content. <laughs> Everything is content. 
All right, we are back and it is time to stain. I have been loving Bear's water-based stain lately. This is the color Early American and I've been using it for a whole bunch of pieces. If you've watched any of my flips, then you know I preach tack cloths. Tack cloths are sticky cheesecloth, and no matter how many times you wipe down your piece, there's still going to be particles left over. So the sticky cloth just picks up any of those particles that's left over prior to painting, shellacking, staining, top coating, everything. I refinished a mid-century modern set a few weeks ago and tried this wipe-on polyurethane for the first time. I've really been loving it. It is oil-based, so make sure you don't use it over any white or light-colored furniture because oil-based top coats can actually make them yellow over time. Next, we're going to add the hardware. This bronze gold hardware is some of my favorite, and you'll see me using it on a whole bunch of furniture flips. Here is a reminder of what the piece looked like before, and here is it after. There are definitely some things I would do differently the next time, but all in all, I'm really happy with how this piece turned out. Head to the description box for links to all of the products I used on this IKEA flip and let me know in the comments if you would try this on an IKEA piece as well. Thank you guys so much for watching till the end of the video. Um, if you're here at this point, then I'm assuming you want to learn from all of my mistakes. So I made a lot, let me tell you. Um, my first mistake was I used skewers. So. Using skewers was not, I guess, the mistake, actually. It was the fact that I used bamboo skewers. Um, the bamboo doesn't soak up the stain, so it was a little bit splotchier in some areas. Some yellowing came through. I would definitely use either wood dowels or just plain wooden skewers the next time. My second mistake, um, I would probably... If I could, try to find an all wood dresser. Um, that way I could sand down the edges and so there wasn't like white still showing or that I didn't have to paint them. And my third mistake. So the wood glue that I used, it's great. It works usually amazing, but it didn't adhere to the bamboo as much as I was hoping. So I would probably use like a super glue or a gorilla glue, something besides just wood glue that might help it stick a little bit better next time. So hopefully you can learn from my mistakes. I would definitely be doing this again in the future. I think it would be really pretty to do an entire piece like this, but then paint it um, so that the detail of the rods and the dowels really stand out. Again, before we go, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and I will see you next week for another video.